From sleeping in an active volcano to climbing one with a disability, some people just don't seem to mind the heat. Here are five eruptive stories that will melt your mind. I have been skiing since I was four years old. My name is Claudio and I ski over volcanoes. I spend most part of the year close to the mountain. When I spend time away from it, I feel nostalgic, like if something is missing to my soul, to my life. And in this moment, I take my ski and I go up. Mount Etna is located on the east coast of Sicily. It is known as the tallest and active volcano in Europe. The risks to climbing Mount Etna are the same of any other mountain. Uh, you have to be careful and uh, respect what's surrounding us. The view from the top is unique. You can see the landscape changing many times, from green woods to desert volcanic area, all the lava flow and the coast. Black powder is volcanic sand and it's formed during the eruption. It's incredible. In upstate New York, there are two guys creating some dangerous and risky explosions, all in the name of science. This is Ingo. I'm Ingo Sonder. I work for the Center for GIZ Studies at the University of Buffalo. And this is Andrew. My name is Andrew Harp. I am a PhD student at the University of Buffalo. The researchers studying large-scale disasters, more specifically volcanic eruptions. Currently we work on an experiment on explosive magma water interaction. But there's a problem. There's no lava in upstate New York. So they made their own. They start with rocks. 50 to 60 kilograms of rock. We melt it in our furnace. Uh, this takes four hours roughly. The rock liquefies and can reach more than 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. We then pour the molten rock from that furnace into a container and into that container we inject water and hope that uh, the water interacts dramatically with uh, our molten rock. It's almost impossible without being there to understand how much heat is uh, put off uh, by this, this lava. I have to wear a aluminized suit, a jacket and a kind of pants. I have to wear that for protection for, from potential splashes and most importantly from the heat radiation that comes out there. We want to understand better a magma water interaction and that actually occurs in explosive volcanic eruptions. The goal would be to be able to predict exactly the size and timing of the reaction that we have. I feel uh, fortunate to be working with something that's so unique that it's only done in a few places in the entire world right now. And to be at the forefront of this research is great. What may look like a beautiful green oasis is actually the top of an active volcano. Located in Java, Indonesia, is the Kuala Jen volcano. At its top sits a highly acidic crater lake. The water is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and appears bluish green. No species live in or around the water, 
as the conditions are too harsh for nature to survive. At night, a rare phenomenon can be seen. Unlike any other volcano in the world, Koala Gen emits what appears to be bright blue flames. This blue glow is not caused by lava, but instead from a combustion of sulfuric gases. Once the gases cool, a bright yellow sulfur forms, which is mined and sold. Miners use steel bars to break off portions of the sulfur and carry up to 200 pounds back down the volcano. The emitted gases are toxic if inhaled, making this strenuous work incredibly dangerous. While this unique volcano may be home to one of the world's most grueling jobs, it is also a sight worth seeing. When we think about volcanoes, we imagine these eruptive, hot, violent gateways to the center of the Earth. And I spoke to a scientist who spends the night in them. My name is Ken Sims, and I'm a professor of isotope geology at the University of Wyoming. Ken studies, among other things, volcanoes. And it's for a few reasons, but one in particular. You can start to forecast this likelihood for another eruption. To get his research data, he has to spend time in them, sometimes overnight. So we're talking about what it feels like to spend the night in an active volcano. You're in a big crater. It's spectacular. It's, this is like being in a steep, deep canyon, except for now it's circular all the way around you. There's a lava lake below you and the summit is above you. Volcanoes have a particular smell because they're full of gas. Those gases are very sulfurous, so they smell um, strong and acrid. They also have acids in them, and so they're toxic. The air can be dangerous to breathe in. You know, you've, you oftentimes are wearing gas masks, but it's pretty hard to sleep with gas masks. And it's noisy. It's echoey, typically. You'll hear hissing. Instead of a campfire, there's an active lava lake. But looking at a lava lake is just phenomenal that way. It's, it's mesmerizing. And there's something about the, the red, warm glow. It's unworldly. There's a lot to distract you from sleep. But Sim says none of that matters. You, you, you don't want to go to bed. I mean, this is how the Earth's surface formed was from volcanoes. And if you're in the moment, it's amazing. That's so cool. We came together to accomplish a mission. We will be walking around six to eight hours. We want to show the world that with the proper prosthetic care and orthotic care, it makes a big difference in someone's life. My name is Keontae Story. I lost my leg back in 2010 overseas in Afghanistan and with the United States Marines. After my injury, I felt lost and confused. A lot of questions of why, why am I still alive, why am I here? Suicidal thoughts, which made waking up every day very difficult. Being active for me just became my therapy. I found myself inspiring others and motivating others to be active as well. Currently we're in Ecuador climbing for Range of Motion Project which is a local organization providing prosthetic and orthotic care to countries who don't have the means to provide such care to their uh, citizens. We have 10 to 12 amputees climbing Hayambe Volcano. We all come from different backgrounds and all different injuries. To be a part of such a team, to me, is very, very important and it's very inspiring. Somebody in Kayambe from the refuge will take about 12 hours. We have the equipment and the gear, but we have to be patient and wait for the right weather to get to the summit safely. Whether we summit Kayambe Volcano or not, it is just a small part of what we're here to do. With this climb, I hope others will learn a lot about themselves and their abilities. They can do anything they want to. There is nothing that is impossible.
Hey everybody, my name is Drew Beebe, and I'm here in my terrible home studio that I've made during quarantine, and I wanted to tell you about our new podcast called Great Big Story. It's got more surprising and delightful stories just like this one, so head over to Apple Podcasts, to Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and download Great Big Story.